Well, good evening. Let's wait for the music to quiet down there. Good evening and Merry Christmas. Um, I know we're socially distanced and whatnot, but uh, for those of you here at 826 Eglinton, I wanted to give you a chance um, just to turn and, and, and holler at the next closest uh, row or person and just say Merry Christmas. Um, to those at home joining us online, maybe you can uh, greet one another at home saying Merry Christmas. Well, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, whether in person or online, I'd like to, again, just warmly welcome you. My name is Albert, and I have the uh, privilege and, and um, pleasure to pastor Trinity Grace Church, and it'll be my uh, pleasure to lead us along uh, in our Christmas Eve service tonight. Uh, what you can look forward to is uh, just a, a, a mingling of uh, responsive readings where myself or some volunteers from our church uh, congregation will come up and lead in those readings, uh, and then you'll have a chance to uh, have a congregational reading and response uh, along with that all together. And uh, interspersed, uh, we'll sing some Christmas hymns, and we'll have some videos. Uh, and so, again, we're glad you're here, and today is special because uh, in church history, um, tomorrow is the day that we have designated to remember Jesus coming to earth. Uh, it's not the day. I don't think it's the day. We're not uh, accurately sure if it's the day that he was actually born, but nevertheless to uh, remember because it's significant that Jesus did come to earth uh, as he was found as a little baby. Um, that is God saying, I want to know and experience what you experience in your weakness in your uh, fragility as a human being, to know even what you suffered, to know your hopes. Uh, and the only way that God could fully, truly prove that to us is to become human himself. Uh, and so all the more, uh, when he took our place on the cross for our sins, had that much more meaning and significance. So we want to begin by just acknowledging that God certainly is calling out to us. And so if you're able, let's stand together, uh, whether at home or here, and I'll read the leader portion, and we'll all read the together portion. And so let's acknowledge that God is calling us. He longs to have a relationship with us, and Christmas certainly is uh, God in one very beautiful and loud way saying, I love you. I've reaching out for you and pursuing you. So let's answer God's call this Christmas Eve service. All God's people, boys and girls, women and men, and together, come and worship. Shepherds, magi, saints and angels, come and worship. All who need the Savior, all who long for comfort, come and worship. Come and worship the, the newborn King. Let's pray together. Be near us, Lord Jesus, as the song beautifully says. We ask you to stay close by us forever and love us, we pray. Emmanuel, God with us, we invite you to draw near and dwell with us. Surround us with your tender, caring presence that what we say and do in worship might prepare us to live forever with you in the new creation. In your powerful name we pray, amen. You can grab a seat.
So let's read together again. Let us go in heart and mind to see what has come to pass. Let us go with the shepherds. Let us go to find the Savior together. Let us go with the wise ones. Let us go to find God's promise born for us. Let us go with the poor and humble. Let us go to find our King born in a lowly manger. Let us go with all the world, with all the peoples of the nations. Come, let us worship. Come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Let's sing together. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come him born the king of angels oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him Christ the of angels sing in exaltation sing all ye bright hosts of heaven above glory to God glory in the highest oh come let us let us adore him oh come let us adore him Christ the Lord yea Lord we greet thee born this happy morning Jesus to Well, remember that God is glorious, and we see it in God promising uh, that he really promising Christmas a long long time ago, and Christmas being his plan of redemption. I'd like to invite Karen uh, up to come and lead us in this next reading. We're reading from Micah 5, 2 to 4. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, together, come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. 
and they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its word a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night, when Christ was born, O oh, night. Faith serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand. So led by light of a star sweetly gleaming, here come the wise men from Orient land. The King of Kings lay thus in lonely manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. He knows our need to weakness is no stranger. Behold your King before him gladly bend. Behold your King before him gladly bend. Another his law is love, and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. In grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. 
Oh, praise His name forever. His power and glory. For more, proclaim His power and glory. I should say as we progress along, uh, and I'm glad that people are already doing this, please feel free to worship and express your joy, your gladness, your adoration of Christ, and um, just as you feel free, whether it's to want to stand or kneel or raise your hands or whatnot. Um, As we remember that God is glorious, we see this uh, certainly in how he reveals himself and his plan uh, to Mary and so uh, and Joseph and so at this time I'd like to invite Clara to come from TG Kids, one of our precious uh, children in our congregation, to lead us in this reading. So Clara will lead the leader portion, and we'll all together read uh, the together portion. From Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 35. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. And the the angel angel said said to her, her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He he will be great, and he will be called the Son of Most High. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Uh, This gift from TG Kids, it's fitting that you kind of led the way. Oh, you can go grab your seat. And this was a light show that they pre- uh, prepared for Christmas. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests.
Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, when Herod was king. After Jesus' birth, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the one who was born to be the king of the Jews? We saw his star rising and have come to worship him. Now it was long ago when it all began Back in Bethlehem in a promised land A single star appeared in the sky And three kings saw and the east as wide East as wide And they checked the books full of prophecy And the one king said, why it's plain to me You see it means that a king is born Who saved mankind on this blessed morn So they packed some gold, myrrh and frankincense On some old camels with some fancy tents Closed down the house, set the servants free And three kings rode into history On the hard strings. Well, um, I forgot. So thank you, TG Kids. Well, remember that God is redeeming. I'd like to invite up Carmen and Zach uh, to lead us in this reading. Never seen such a muscular Rudolph. <laughs> um, we'll be reading from uh, Luke two, uh, chapter two, one through fourteen. Oh, it's up here. Sweet. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. For the first enrollment occur or occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city to Nazareth, 
in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them, and the Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David City. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel, praising God. Together. They said, Glory, Glory to God, God in the, in the highest, highest, and on earth peace, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Well. Let's all stand together and let's sing.
I think we were supposed to stay standing and sing Angels We Have Heard on High. <laughs> so let's stand, and I think Steve will get that going. snuggly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the field nearby guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I will bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory, Glory to God in highest heaven, heaven and, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, 
Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they have heard and seen. It was just as the angels had told them. TGC Choir. Well, naturally, uh, there's an obvious theme tonight, and it's been coming out uh, just over and over again um, in the songs and the readings, and uh, it's all about Christ's birth. Um, I loved in the TG Kids light show, uh, the one word that, or the phrase that really stuck out to me was, and he was catapulted into history. Uh, all these passages and scriptures that we've read, um, they're history. They're history. I know to uh, the first time here, or perhaps the, the skeptic, there are certain details in these readings that seem way out there, 
almost like science fiction. Um, but when I think of just the phenomenon of, say, the aurora borealis, which feels like a host of angels in the sky, if God is God, and he is, he exists, he created this universe, and we believe he created out of nothing, then all the wonderful miracles that we read about tonight, the virgin birth, the choir of angels, all these things, a star being in the sky, and wise men following it to find the location of the born Savior. These things are nothing for God. They're nothing for God. And so first off, I hope that wherever you're at uh, in your spiritual journey, in your spiritual seeking, um, start from there. This is history. Even the most skeptical non-Christian mind acknowledges that Jesus is in history, that he's recorded in history, that there is this man. And so I'd like to leave us with um, just a little bit more reflection on this historical event. And so I'd like to read from Matthew chapter 2. And sometimes uh, it's a good exercise. You have to be wise about how you do it and careful how you do it, but Sometimes it's good to kind of see yourself in the passage. Uh, and Matthew chapter 2, it records the uh, instance of these wise men, the Magi, uh, who followed the star and came searching for this newborn king. And I think in the day that we live in uh, as um, just the West, as urbanites in Toronto, uh, definitely in a culture and society that is trying to be more scientific and wise. Uh, we're trying to be wise all the time. Just today, uh, as I was working out, I was listening to a TED Talk, and it was very wise. There's lots of wisdom to glean from, from that talk. Um, and so perhaps we can see ourselves uh, in these wise men. And so I'll just read from verses 1 to 6, Matthew chapter 2. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, a ruler, who will shepherd, who will shepherd my people Israel. Would you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, as we've gathered to worship you this Christmas Eve, as we've gathered as a church to again rejoice and acknowledge and celebrate this history that you sent your Son, that he was born some 2,000 years ago, and he came to be king. He came to be a suffering king, and his very purpose was not only to be born and to experience what we do, but to become the perfect substitute and take our place on the cross for our sins. So help us, like the magi, the wise men, to seek him out. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, if you can remember even just perhaps one thing from my little shorter sermon, um, it would be this prayer. And I hope that you can find it in your heart to want to talk to God by faith uh, in this way. Lord, let me not forget the Christ of Christmas. Lord, let me not forget the Christ of Christmas. Uh, certainly in our day and time in the West, in Toronto, even Toronto, I mentioned a few weeks ago just how 
uh, the beloved historic uh, Christmas market. They changed their name uh, for the first time in many, many years, and, and from this po- point forward, they are no longer the Christmas market, but they are just the winter village. And we see Christ being pushed out of this time of year and being the real meaning of it, and certainly our society and culture forgotten uh, Christ, the Christ of Christmas, a long time ago. But I hope, uh, beginning with those of us who profess to be Christ followers, that we would not fall into that same slippery slope uh, and, and get caught up in all the, I mean, it is a wonderful season. It's beautiful. Uh, there are a lot of good just societal mores and traditions, um, and, and it's time for families to get together and so forth. But in the midst of all that, starting with the church, that we would not forget the Christ of Christmas especially when things become really busy and stressful because of all the gatherings and preparing and so forth. It's so easy to forget the Christ of Christmas. But all the more to any friends that are investigating, maybe you came today on uh, just the arm of a a friend. We're so glad you're here with us. And we hope that you would really consider the Christ of Christmas. And so um, I want to uh, do my best to answer the question, how can I celebrate Christmas more truly? How can I celebrate Christmas more truly? And to help answer that question, I'm just going to ask three more questions. So here's the first question. Does Christmas stir you? Does Christmas stir your heart to appreciate God's faithfulness through history more and more? If this time of year stirs that kind of thought, and, and you remember that of God's character, that this is who He is, that He's been so faithful through history, um, then you're celebrating Christmas more truly. Now, where do I see this? It's going back to the text. Um, we see that now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Matthew's really intentional to... Uh, just write one after another to have these really important historical facts. And because it happened in history, God acted in history. But God's not just arbitrarily and randomly all of a sudden one day, okay, now's a good time, an opportune time to, to, to send my son. No, he had planned this long ago because even the fact that he was born in Bethlehem and the words of the prophet that were quoted later in verse 6, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, this was God making a promise some almost around 700 years prior. I remember when I was a child, my parents are here. Don't mean to put you on the spot. I remember when maybe I was six years old, seven years old. Uh, This is in the 1980s, a different time. And they were already beginning to leave me home alone. Uh, at that age, I said, don't worry, we'll be back. It's a different time. Uh, but I remember this was at our apartment building, uh, River Spray Crescent. And I can't remember what, I think we were on the seventh floor. But as a six-year-old kid, you can imagine, after some amount of time, I can't remember how long it was, but you start to feel anxious. It was fun for a little while watching all the, it wasn't YouTube back then, it was just cartoons on TV and so forth, and doing whatever I wanted. But then afterwards, a little bit anxious. Where are they? Where are they? To the point I was just staring out the master bedroom window and looking for our navy blue Chrysler Newport, (laughs) right? And they said they would come. They said they would come. And of course, when they finally did return, the heart of a child is just bursting with um, just gladness that mom and dad are home And, and, and glad that mom and dad kept their promise. Now, that desire for someone to be true to their word and promises, that's in all our hearts, is it not? Whether you're a child or you're an adult, for someone to come through. And all the more, I imagine that the one person who has made the, you know, I'd like, I probably could, you know, just more scientifically, reasonably searching through scripture prove this, but but I'm just going to throw this out there as a thought. I bet in history, God actually has made the most promises in terms of 
quality and quantity to humanity. And he has been keeping every one of them. He has been keeping every one of them. I ask the question, does Christmas stir you to appreciate God's faithfulness through history more? That's what Christmas should stir. Next, does Christmas help you worship Jesus as Christ? If we're keeping Christ in Christmas, then this time, what should be shining the brightest, what should be uh, in our hearts the most, that, that actually should even push out whatever stress of traditions coming in and busyness and, and to-do lists and so forth, what should be there as the overpowering emotion and thought and affection is that thank you. Thank you, God. I'm going to remember during Christmas that Christ, that Jesus is the Christ. And what Christ means is king, is God's chosen king, chosen Messiah. Does Christmas help you worship Jesus as Christ, as king? Now, where do I see this in the text? These wise men, magi, at best, they seem like they were astronomers. They knew how to study the stars and the sky. But if we're honest, they probably were even leaning towards being astrologers, trying to find some sense of meaning in life by studying the stars. But beyond that, and more importantly, they were seeking wisdom. They were seeking truth, and they, whether they had the Scriptures, or we don't know where they got this information, but we do know that they were coming explicitly to search for this King, this newborn King. They came with faith and belief that Jesus is the King. A baby, or at this point, probably not just an infant, but a bit older, that this child that they would discover was indeed God's chosen king. And so in verse 2, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Now, this is where, I, I, going back to the thought, I think we can see ourselves as a culture in the Magi. Because here are people, if maybe they were coming from the wrong angle, maybe they were astrologers, maybe they, you know, just their heart was first seeking wisdom, but in God's mercy, their search for wisdom eventually ended at the truest wisdom. Their search for small, lowercase t truth led to capital T, absolute, the one truth that Jesus is King, and that Jesus is God's way of saving us, reconciling us, and forgiving our sins so that we could spend not just this life with Him, but eternity. Okay? Does Christmas help you worship Jesus Christ as King? Psalm 90, um, just as a little preview, that's what we're going to preach on uh, I'm going to be preaching on this Sunday as to welcome in the new year. And there's a beautiful line in Psalm 90. Teach us, O Lord, to number our days aright. Why? Because if you number your days aright, if you have perspective that this life is temporary and that there is eternal life after this life, after death, then Moses says, so that we can gain a heart of wisdom heart of wisdom. I believe these wise men, they had that wisdom. They were looking beyond just this life. They weren't just coming to find some other geopolitical king of some political boundaries and, and some country on earth to compete with the other governments of the time, to compete with the Roman government or whatever other government. No, they came knowing Somehow, God revealed to them, this is King of eternity. This is Jesus Christ of eternity. Why were the wise men so wise? Because they were, going, they were willing to go to great lengths to find the one true King 
and to worship Him. Did you catch that? I'll read it in the passage. Their response, their response, their outward bodily response reflected their inner heart response. And so, uh, sorry, I didn't read it, but it comes after in verse in the verses after that when they saw Jesus, what did they do? They knelt. They knelt. We have a hard time kneeling in our day and time. No one likes to kneel literally, physically before anyone because, and I think in our day and time it's become a carrying a connotation of, of, of humiliation. But in our hearts, when we've found someone or something, I mean, think about at least in our culture where it's still a beautiful thing to kneel. It's when someone proposes, right? Not that they're begging, hopefully not. <laughs> but they're willing to humble themselves and, and to have the attitude, if you would say yes, I would be the most happiest and feeling like I don't deserve this wonderful person in my life. That's, that's a good kneeling. And that's what we see, this wisdom of the wise men. It led them to the capital T truth that Jesus is the Christ, the King. And they worship, they knelt. Final question. Does Christmas ever trouble you? Does Christmas ever trouble you? Because it should. Because if the message of Christmas is true, and it is, then it's going to challenge your life. Because if Christ is king, and we're to kneel to him, and he has reign and first say of, of our lives and how we conduct our lives, then of course it will challenge us at some point. It will grate against our consciences, our values, our morals. And we see that in the passage. Herod, when he heard in all Jerusalem that these wise men searching for wisdom and truth, and they were searching for the newborn king, it says... Verse 3, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. He was troubled. And so at Christmas, it's not just all warm, glowing traditions and feelings. No, if we're celebrating Christmas truly and we're re-encountering Jesus in the gospel, there is going to be some sharpness and grating against just where we're at in our lives. Always, because God is in the business of continuing to mature us and make us more like His Son. So I hope that helps. The prayer being, Lord, help me not to take the Christ out of Christmas. Lord, let me never forget the Christ of Christmas. And how can we celebrate more truly? And so I hope those questions help you to reflect as you as we conclude our service tonight and as you uh, celebrate Christmas Day tomorrow. Well, let's uh, stand together and let's, as we begin to wrap up the service, let's read this together as a prayer. We light this final candle to remind us that Jesus the King is the brightest light offering the brightest hope. Oh, that He might increasingly become our brightest joy even as we wait for His second and final Advent. And so at this Christmas Eve service, this is a wonderful, beautiful symbol. Four Sundays we focused on Christ's first coming, His first advent, even as we look forward to His final coming, His second advent. And so we light this to represent our great hope in Christ as a symbol. At this time, I want to give all of us an opportunity to respond. As remember that God is covenantal, and you can remain standing. Uh, and what that means is that he's a promise maker. He's been faithful through history. He promised his plan of redemption and he's been executing it step by step with perfect faithfulness. And so we can be comforted 
every Christmas as well. Just rest in this covenantal heart of God. And our part is to respond by faith. To first confess Jesus as Christ. Jesus as my king. To even say, Jesus, I get it. You being my king, perhaps you will even offend. You'll challenge. But that's okay because I know I'm safe in your grace. So confessing Jesus as king, that's our first part, our first step of faith. And of course, the Spirit, as He grows us, perhaps He'll bring things up of just shortcomings and so forth, but the purpose being so that we can continue to grow and become more like His Son. And so, uh, we're going to give you an opportunity. After one more reading, uh, we'll be singing the first Noel. And during that time, if it would be meaningful for you, we invite you, we'll go the way I'm looking at it, um, counterclockwise, whether to come down the middle aisle and socially distancing or, or the far aisle, and we'll all uh, proceed out the far, the, my right aisle. And if it's meaningful for you, we invite you to, uh, uh, as a symbol of your response of faith uh, to this covenantal God to confess Christ, to take a candle as a representation of your own heart and to light it uh, and to place it on the table as we sing uh, the first Noel. But before that, uh, let's read this, uh, this responsive reading together. And so we remember that, oh, so I'll read and there'll be a together portion. And so we remember that God has made peace with us through the coming of our Lord. And this is a sign for us from history. The shepherds found a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And together, and so we respond and praise again as the heavenly host and shepherds did. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased. So let's sing together, and if it's meaningful for you, we invite you to participate in the candle lighting, even as an act of prayer. The first Noel the angel did say Was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay In fields where they lay keeping the sheep On a cold winter's night that was so Noel, Noel, born is the King of Israel. They look it up and saw a star shining in the east beyond. It gave great light, and so it continued both day and night. Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel. Then let us all with one accord Sing praises to our heavenly Lord That hath made heaven and earth of naught And with his blood mankind hath bought Noel, Noel, born is the King of 
Israel, Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel. Maybe as um, we just give time for the last few to wrap up, we could just repeat the chorus a cappella. And those at home, you can join us. And those at home as well um, should have given the verbal cue, but please, you're welcome to light your own candles at home. Noel, 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 born is a king of it. Israel, Noel, 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 born is a king of Israel. All right. Okay. Well, you can grab a seat. Let's uh, end with this prayer together. God and Father of Jesus, you have sent your Son to be our Savior our light in the midst of darkness, our hope in the face of threats, our peace amid turmoil. In your word, we have seen him and know that your promises are true. Send us forth from this assembly to live in hope and peace until we gather again. This we ask in the name of Jesus the Lord, and we say together, amen. Just one quick um, announcement. Well, first, uh, to all newcomers and friends that joined us today, thank you for joining us. And uh, if today, perhaps um, when you joined uh, at the start of the service, uh, maybe you consider yourself not a Christ follower. Um, But through the service, if uh, it stirred more questions and you have more questions, please feel free either to approach myself. Uh, I'd love to talk and and, uh, just be introduced to you, and, or you can reach out to us at info at trinitygrace.ca. Uh, and then uh, just one uh, more announcement. Um, because you came Christmas offering, we're going to be collecting this annual special Christmas offering until uh, the end of December, and 100% of proceeds go to partnering with Toronto City Alliance Church, who is spearheading uh, raising the funds and organizing the sponsorship of an Afghani couple uh, that we're trying to bring over. And so we're trying to help to bridge the gap in the funds. Uh, and so if, if that's meaningful for you, and um, that would be an opportunity for you to cheerfully overflow uh, all the blessings in your life, then uh, go to our website, trinitygrace.ca, and at the very top uh, banner, there's a Because He Came Christmas Offering banner. Just click on that. And there'll be more explanation and instructions on how to contribute to that fund. Well, let's stand together and let's receive the benediction. May Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness, who comes with healing in His wings, fill you with the joy and peace that surpasses all understanding. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Be filled with the Spirit. Merry Christmas.